Hi everyone, my name is Tyler, and this is Aftertouch Audio. Today what I thought I'd do is I'd show you guys how I go ahead and master podcasts for things like Spotify and Apple Music, like start to finish um, what, what I receive and what I end up delivering. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Before we get started, if you do like these videos and would like to support the channel, please consider visiting my SFX shop where I have professional sound effects created for your professional needs. Okay, so there's really two types of podcasts that you can kind of get delivered as an audio engineer. One of them being where everyone has their own isolated tracks, either they've recorded at home or they have their own independent microphone that you can now adjust. And the other one is where there's one microphone, everyone's kind of talking around it, and it's embedded in a singular file. This is the podcast that I'm going to be showing you how to master today because I think it's a little bit more difficult versus having everyone on their own tracks. You know, you can EQ them all differently and you can apply varying amounts of compression and gain. Um, this here is a slightly more challenging, but I think it'll get the point across. So let's drag episode two into the session and I'll kind of show you how I have, have things set up. Okay, so this is a file that I'm typically working with for the series. It is a single mono file. It's about 20 or so minutes in length, but we need to go ahead and first deal with a few issues. One of them being, as you can see from the waveform, it is terribly inconsistent in volume. And that's just normal. You, you, you will get that as an audio engineer, but um, let's go ahead and start by opening this up in Isotope RX. Okay, so here's what it looks like at Isotope RX. I have the spectral viewing turned off because I'm really only focused on the waveform at this moment. So if we go ahead and just zoom in um, on, a, on just any sort of part, the first thing I want to go ahead and fix is the phase rotation. As you can see here, um, the, the waveform doesn't really line up with the zero line at all. And what ends up happening is you have a louder uh, positive amplitude than you do on the negative side. I want to fix that across the entirety of the platform and give me a little bit more headroom. So what I do is I highlight the section here, and as you can see in the waveform statistics, it peaks at about minus six. If I were to adaptive phase rotate this, I will now get an additional two dB of headroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run. It'll take about a couple minutes to get to have it run as it is a fairly lengthy podcast. Um, but once that's done, you'll see that I have significantly higher headroom. The next step is to level this dialogue out so it's more consistent. Now, I don't use compression for this. Um, what I actually go ahead and do is I use a program within Isotope RX called Leveler. So when you bring up Leveler, this is what you get. You get a box where you can basically say, this is my target level. You have the responsiveness and you have the preserved dynamics amount. And then you also have S reduction and breath reduction. I disable S reduction and breath reduction as those are two things that I do manually within the DAW. Um, I set the responsiveness to about one and preserve dynamics to 20. I find that gives me a really natural setting. But the thing is, is I'm actually gonna set my target uh, level to minus 20. The reason for this being is I want to have some headroom inside my DAW so I can apply some compression and I can apply some EQ and I can fix other things or apply reverb or effects. I want to have some headroom so that way when I bring it back into my DAW, I have a little play. So let's go ahead and set it to minus 20, which will give me four dB of headroom. Okay, now that leveler is done, you can see that it did a lot. And if you zoom right in on the waveforms, you can see that it has gone ahead and adjusted each line individually. And it has boosted relatively the soft parts by about 10 dB. And then it's made minor adjustments from there. But as you can see, our integrated loudness is minus 19, our short-term loudness is minus 18, and we have more room on the sample true peaks as well. So the very last thing I do in Isotope RX is a simple mouth declick. So if I open up mouth declick, uh, I I use a preset just called uh, transparent um, removal, which is the last one on the list. And it's basically a sensitivity to three, skewing slightly towards the low end and the click widening is very short. So it's basically just that first sort of sound that you get when you open up your mouth. So we go ahead and render this. I will go ahead and bring this back and forth into RX to fix some things like clipping or to fix um, some sort of reverb removal maybe, but uh, I will I'll generally go ahead and do that on a case by case basis. I won't do it in this section here. And now you can see I have a nice leveled waveform. Now, um, this is a multi-part series that I'm working on. And as you can see over here, I have episodes one, two, three, and four, and we even cut a little teaser here. I like to keep my processing across each of them similar. So that way everything kind of sounds like it's been recorded in the same space. It's used the same processing. I don't change it up too much. For this specific podcast, I've gone ahead and created some preset tracks for things like through a phone, uh, through a terrible recorder, through a tape recorder, uh, through a terrible phone duplicate, as sometimes we have uh, different tracks that I want to go ahead and pitch around. I have a distant voice one that when I put it on, it kind of just throws them across the room. And I have a modulated voice for the speaker. Let's go through the dialogue processing chain. So on the actual track itself, I'm using a couple of plugins and the first one is Pro Q3. So what I do is I roll off the bottom end and I roll off the top end. The top end I roll off at around um, 13.5. Um, the reason being is it's all a hiss up there. There's not an actual 
parts of your dialogue that needs to be there, so I just kind of get rid of it. I boost presence around 4K, and I dip around 400 hertz just to kind of clean up some mud within the voices. Other than that, that's as bad as it EQE as I get. If I had individual uh, dialogue tracks, I will then go ahead and um, EQ out uh, each person individually and make sure that they all sound the best they can. From there, I do what's called multiband compression. And you can do this with Pro MB or any sort of multiband compressor you have. The stock ones are great. I use a program called um, the SA2. Uh, it's from Mic, uh, DSP. It's essentially a dialogue uh, multiband compressor, EQ, saturator. It, it does a lot um, behind the scenes. But basically all this does is it takes the dialogue, makes it more consistent, and it also kind of tames off the harsh end. Think of it like Soothe 2 and um, Pro MB had a had a love child and they kind of came together. The next step is DSing. And again, if you have the FabFilter Pro... Pro Suite, uh, Pro DS is great. I'm using a program called uh, Ava DSer. I just like the visual of this plugin. Uh, I can change it to be a spectral viewing option as well. It just helps calm down some of the S's. From there, I have a very, very gentle amount of noise um, suppression, and that is done through NS1. And the reason why I'm using NS1 is it does a fantastic job at just touching the high end that high-end hiss that you normally get from microphone setups or from like ambient rooms that sound it does a really good job of cleaning that up and it's just the smallest 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 amount and i can automate this up and down depending if i need more or less the last plugin in my uh, actual dialogue effects chain is a plugin called pow air and you can actually use um, a couple of other plugins that do something similar to this um i, I use this because it's really simple straightforward um and it's got a preset just called voiceover 16 which basically says i want my program to be six uh, minus 16 here you go uh, as long as it's as long as your program fits between these two bars it will make it so it's minus 16 but it's basically just an upward and downward compressor and i think waves has one i'll stick it up right here for you so you can kind of uh, grab it. It's it's significantly cheaper than this, and it does essentially the same job. On my master track itself, uh, it's pretty straightforward. All I have is a true peak limiter, and I use the ISL2. Again, um, Pro L2 works just as well, and I have a loudness meter to make sure that all of my stuff is in compliance, and I, for that I use ISL2. And again, Ulean works just as well. Um, so, like... These are just plugins that I'm using. Um, the, uh, the the True Peak limiter, any True Peak limiter works. The um, the loudness meter, any loudness meter works. The EQ, any EQ works. Multiband compression, every multiband compression works. So just just take the processes that I'm doing and apply them to your own work and, and what you have available to you. You, you. you don't need to go out and spend all this kind of money on, on plugins and stuff like that. But for that being said, the last thing I do is I actually do the mix. So essentially, once the dialogue is leveled, um, that's kind of where it's at. I can then mix the music around the dialogue. I can now mix the effects around the dialogue. And I have a very similar template to my template series, which I'll link over here. I just use a couple music tracks uh, and I've gone ahead and either done music edits or composed certain tracks for this. Um, throughout here, I have all of my um, sound effects. For the podcast specifically, I'm doing everything as sound effects. There is no Foley, it's all sound effects. So feet would be considered sound effects just because there's, you're not syncing it to anything. It's, it would, it's all considered effects. I have all of my effects here with the feet, uh, they're mono, and then I have stereo effects down here, and then I have backgrounds. Uh, again, very similar to how I cut for film. It's all modular, it's, it, it all works, and stuff like that. But if you don't actually need any effects in your podcast, you just bring them down and just use your dialogue tracks. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, if you did like it, please leave a like and comment below, and I will see you in the next one.